Hi guys, I'm Nancy, and I'm going to show you what the derivative is, the definition of the derivative with the limit, and how to find the derivative with the definition. And I'm going to show you all the important parts step by step so you won't miss anything. And I know for some of you that may sound like a threat, but don't worry, it's not that bad, I promise. Let me show you. So what is the derivative? Long story short, it's a function that tells you the slope of the line tangent to the curve at any point. It gives you the rate of change at any instant, the instantaneous rate of change at any point. And we're going to figure out the proper definition of the derivative with the limits. But if you just can't wait to use it to calculate the derivative, you can skip ahead and jump to the time in the description or you can go down this rabbit hole with us. But say you have a curve, a random curve. The derivative tells you the slope at any point on your curve. The steepness or rise of a run, the slope. But really what it's telling you is the slope of the line tangent to the curve. The so tangent line is a line that touches at only one point on the curve. It skims the surface, grazes the curve, and touches at only one point. And every point on your graph has a different little tangent line. So if the derivative is supposed to tell you the slope at each little tangent line, how can we know that slope if we only know one point for sure on each tangent line, and you know we need two points to find the slope. Very good question. We don't know how to do that yet. I mean, if we had instead a straight line graph, a linear function like that, we would know the slope everywhere because you could pick any two points there, use the slope formula, get a number for slope, and it would be the same everywhere that slope you'd be done. But life is not that simple, usually. Our graph is curved and the slope is changing everywhere. The tangent line is different everywhere. So how can we know the slope everywhere if it's always changing and we only know one point for sure on each tangent line? Like I said, we don't know how to do that yet. We are not that sophisticated yet, but we can figure it out from things that we do know and we can make the actual definition or formula for the derivative. Okay, so for the derivative, if we want to know the slope of this tangent line at any point, call it x, we can start with what we do know, the good old slope of a straight line between two points, pick a second point somewhere on the curve, and draw a straight line through. And we know how to find the slope of a straight line with the old-fashioned slope formula, which is a throwback to middle school probably, so finding the slope between two points has come back to haunt you. But you have to know your points, so let's label them. If the second point is some distance away horizontally, let's call that distance h, then this point has an x-coordinate that is h more than x, or x plus h. We want the actual points, the x-y pairs. So for this point, for the x-y pair, the x-coordinate will be x. And the y-coordinate we'll call f of x, which just stands for the y-value that the function will give us. So that's that point. And for this other point, for the x-y pair, the x-coordinate will be not x, but x plus h. And the y-coordinate will be not f of x, but f of x plus h. And just humor me, this is all going somewhere. We have two points which is great because we can use those two points in the slope formula that you know and love. Okay, so here's the slope formula. It's the rise over run, 
or vertical change over the horizontal change. It's the second y minus the first y all over the second x minus the first x. So let's use that for our two points. Okay, so this is the slope we found for the secant line. I did some simplifying and you could cancel x's in the bottom, but this is the slope and it ended up being the difference in the y's over the horizontal difference, the, the h. So it's the slope of the secant line and it's also known as the difference quotient, if you hear that, because it's a quotient of differences very original name. This is the slope of the secant line, and we are halfway to the derivative, so bear with me. So we are almost to the derivative, and we would be there, we would be done if we had a straight line graph, a linear function, then this slope we found would be right everywhere. It would be enough. But we don't have that, we have a curved graph, and the straight line secant slope that we found, it's actually an okay approximation for the slope at that point x. It's a rough estimate, and that's a big part of calculus is estimating something nonlinear with something linear. So it's a rough estimate, the slope we found, and it's not great, but it's decent. But let's not settle for decent. We don't want an approximation of the slope here. We want the exact slope, the real slope there, and not some wonky approximation between it and some point nearby. No, we can make it exact if we close in on x by narrowing h to zero and picking a right point that is closer and closer to the left so that the horizontal distance gets smaller and smaller. And the closer those two points are together, the more accurate our estimate is for the slope at that point. And we can make it perfect if we make h so small, make h infinitely smaller by taking the limit as h approaches zero. So we're going to do a better and better approximation until it's spot on. So the secant line becomes the tangent line. As this point shifts toward x, by the time it's the same point as x, this line is accurate. It's the tangent line slope. So the secant line becomes the tangent line the slope of the secant line becomes the slope of the tangent line. In other words, the limit of the secant slope is the tangent line slope when it's only touching at one point. And so this limit is the slope of the tangent line. And surprise, surprise, that limit also defines the derivative. This is the definition of the derivative. So we have finally arrived at the definition of the derivative. So this is the definition of the derivative. When that limit exists, this defines it. That's the derivative. And this notation you just read as f prime of x. It just means the derivative of f. Also, I should say, because that slope, tangent line slope, can be always changing in different and different places. because It's variable. It can be variable. And that's why the derivative is a function. It is itself a function, just like the original function, also a function. Just to reiterate, the derivative tells you the slope everywhere, how steep, rise of a run, slope, slope number, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, derivative is basically slope. And to be honest, this might not really click and make sense until you see it used in something like physics, where if you're looking at something moving in time, the position 
changing in time. A curved graph would mean that the slope is always changing. The velocity is changing and not constant because there's an acceleration. Whereas if you had a straight line graph, the slope would be the same everywhere because the velocity is not changing because there's no acceleration. But anyway, this is the definition of the derivative. Now the question is, how do you use it? Okay, so say you have to find the derivative using the definition of the derivative or by the limit process. This is what you use. You use the definition of the derivative, but for your f of x, whatever you're given. So to find the derivative, f prime of x, it's going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0. That's there out front, limit as h approaches 0. And then we fill in this part of the formula f of x plus h means take your f and in place of x you use x plus h like all of x plus h in place of x everywhere x appears so let's do that the f of x plus h part which looks like this 3 times x plus h squared instead of x squared plus 12 then you subtract f of x, but you're subtracting all of f of x just as is, however the f of x looks. But make sure you use parentheses when you do the subtraction so you get the right signs. So we have minus all of f of x, and then it's all over h in the formula. Now we can just do some algebra and simplify. Okay, so here's all the work to find the derivative. Our answer was 6x, but in the work I foiled, I distributed, I factored, I canceled terms. At one point I factored out an h so that it would cancel with the bottom h. And in the end I took the limit, and I was able to take the limit by plugging in 0 for h. And I got 6x, which is a beautiful, simple result after all that work in algebra. The derivative is just 6x. f prime of x is 6x. What that means is that the derivative of this function, 3x, plus, 3x squared plus 12, is just 6x. And anywhere in that function, f, the slope would be the number you get by using 6x. At any instant, any x, the slope is what you get from 6x at that instant. So that's how you find the derivative using the definition with the limits. Just remember that it's the only tricky part is that this part f of x plus h means that instead of x, you use x plus h, so all of x plus h in place of x. And at this point, I should say, just FYI, as a public service announcement, this way with the definition and the limit is good and all, it's correct and illustrative, but in reality it's pretty tedious. It's a lot of extra algebra and in practice that's not really how most people take derivatives, so if you're taking a lot of derivatives, all this extra algebra is, um, what's the word, disaster. And there's a faster, simpler way, and if nothing explicitly says you have to find it using the definition, or by the limit process, you can use the derivative rules, which are a faster, simpler way, much less extra algebra. And I have a video on how to find the derivative with the derivative rules, so you can jump to that for that explanation. So I hope that helped you understand the derivative. I know calculus is exactly what you wanted to be doing right now. It's okay, you don't have to like math, but you can like my video, so if you did, please click like or subscribe.